In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to evening prayer on this Wednesday evening in Holy Week. I am Jim Goodyear, and I serve as the pastor at Bergstrasse Lutheran Church in Ephrata. For those of you familiar with Bergstrasse, you may notice that I am not in the Bergstrasse Sanctuary. Thanks to the COVID pandemic and an intervention of the Holy Spirit, the people of God who gather in ministry and mission at Bergstrasse and Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, also in Ephrata, have recently began to invest in a cooperative ministry model. We offer this midweek Lenten worship from the sanctuary of Holy Trinity. For the North Lancaster cluster of Lutheran congregations and wherever you may be. With me this evening is Mark Luscombe, the pastor at Holy Trinity, along with several musicians and recording technicians. Our theme during this season of Lent, created for community, concludes this evening with a look at God's presence in our brokenness. Individual brokenness, community brokenness, national brokenness, for anyone feeling less than or even separated from God and God's people. We are using Holden Evening Prayer as a framework for our worship on this Wednesday evening. We pray that your worship experience is meaningful as we enter again into the stories of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection to new life. We take a breath, allowing the Holy Spirit to enter and dwell within our hearts as we prepare for worship. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, our Savior, suffered at human hands and endured the shame of the cross. Grant that we may walk in the way of his cross 
and find in it the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Psalm number 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Let us pray. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. 
Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in, dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. The Gospel of the Lord. So just a quick recap. Over the past five weeks, a different congregation here in the North Lancaster cluster of Lutheran congregations, we focused our conversations with you around that we are all created for community. And over the past five weeks, there was a different segment of community that was lifted up as to how we might engage with them. And this evening, our conversation centers around all of those segments of creation, all of those segments of people, no matter where they are, because all of us, in one way or another, will face brokenness. The brokenness of a relationship, which is what we're really talking about here, is the relationships that we create with each other in, in community, but also with the understanding that they will, that each of us will experience some type of brokenness. So to hear this story this evening that you shared with us, Pastor Mark, of Jesus' betrayal with Judas and how Jesus even spoke to Judas in this encounter is just amazing. I mean, because there Jesus had gathered his disciples, they were seated at a table he gathered his own community of disciples that he had been working with. And he also knew that even in the love that they all had for one another and for God, there was brokenness. Mm -hmm. There was brokenness. And that's, as you said, that is the, the key message that I find in this story. As you said, that Jesus gathered them in in love. And that's one of the things that when we think about community, we don't always think about communities getting along. But in this community, Jesus brought together those disciples. And Jesus knew that he would be betrayed. He knew that Jesus was going to be the one. But he welcomed him in love. He welcomed him as a friend. He welcomed him as a companion on this journey that he had been on with them. Mm. And despite that, despite that brokenness that Jesus knew was there, he still had room for love. 
he still looked upon Judas as a child of God, as somebody worth God's mm. love, worth his love, worth his respect, worth his time. Yeah. And he gave that to him. I find that that is, I think I find that as kind of like the ultimate example of love. Because I know that if I were to be betrayed, and I've experienced some of that in my life. I've experienced some brokenness in relationships throughout my life. Mm -hmm. But I've also been challenged, though, how to extend that love. How to extend that even when I know that I personally have been hurt. Or in our group, in our own little small community or whatever. I also find it very, also just life-giving how Jesus was in touch with each of his disciples, each and every one of them. And he knew, he knew which one would be the one. And I know that in some of the small communities of which I am a part of, where there has been brokenness, I've often been surprised by the brokenness that happens in there because sometimes I don't recognize my own brokenness. Yeah, we get, it's easy for us to find the brokenness in other people. We can find where their faults are. We can find or see the ways in which they are not perfect or don't live up to our right. expectations or... Um, whatever it is we think they should be. And we, uh, we don't always look into the mirror. We don't always see the brokenness in us. And that's, in, the, in brokenness, I, I mean, we don't know in this story with Jesus and Judas what the difference would have been if they would have talked it out or if they would have figured out what their differences were. We, we don't know all the dynamics in here. But I think communication tends to be one of the important things mm. when it comes to brokenness. Because in any broken relationship, there, there are two sides, like in anything. There are, you know, two, two sections of a community, or if it's two people, you have two people involved in this relationship. And I mean, two people could be a community. Sure. I mean, sure. So it's that willingness, again, to, to realize that we are all broken that we are all imperfect, seeing that brokenness in ourselves as well as what we see in other people and really be willing to humble ourselves, to humble ourselves, to be willing to talk about it, be willing yeah. to humble ourselves to say, okay, the only way that we're gonna fix this, the only way that we're gonna make this better is to talk it out, is to realize that we are two people or we are groups of people and in that brokenness, like in this brokenness that we heard about with Jesus and his community, there is still love there. Yeah. There is love for each other and concern yeah. for each other. And it, that's something that we always need to kind of stop and to think about and to not let our feelings, our negative feelings or our feelings of superiority or rightness um, get in the way of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that in that too often. I think we just want to dwell in that. We want to dwell in the brokenness sometimes mm -hmm. because it feels more comfortable there. Right. But when we work through it, when we listen to one another, when we talk it through, love then blooms again in new, in new and vibrant ways. Right. I was also touched in this particular reading in the way that Jesus made known to everyone that was around that table who would be the one that would betray him. A piece, a piece of bread in a cup. Even in that moment, Jesus was feeding, giving love to all of them. Mm -hmm. 
it, it wasn't just a symbol of, for the disciples of, well, the one that's going to betray me is the one who gets the bread. Yeah. There's more to it than that. It's not just, you know, when I do this, that's going to be the one. There's that deeper understanding, that deeper connection that Jesus had with Judas. Absolutely. And it's when we, it's, it's Jesus putting, and this is tough for us to do, it's Jesus putting the relationship that he values so much mm. before himself, before his ego, before what he thinks is right for himself. Yeah. And looks at the whole, the whole thing, the whole relationship, the, the need to heal that relationship. And I always, you know, we, again, we, we can look at this story and we know what happens next with Judas. And Judas is riddled with guilt and he realizes that what he did was wrong is what he shouldn't do. And I've always just wondered, what, what if there would have been a difference? What if they would have taken the time? What if Judas hadn't given up on that relationship or felt so badly yeah. about it and was willing to come yeah. together with Jesus? I mean, we know this had to happen. I mean, that, that's, the betrayal has to happen for the events of, of Holy for Week to be carried out yeah. for the crucifixion, you know, Jesus' arrest, trial, crucifixion. But I wonder if what that relationship would have been, I wonder how that, for us to think about in our relationships, you know, can we stop it from going too far? Where, you know, I don't think, I don't think it's ever too late for a relationship to be mended if both yeah. parties are willing to come together and, and you know, realize that no one is perfect um, and be willing to um, take that brokenness and repair that brokenness. Yeah. I think this story is also key for us as we enter now into the rest of the story of Thursday and Friday of the waiting on Saturday mm -hmm. and the resurrection that happens Sunday that it's a sign for us that God does not give up on us either. Mm -hmm. God does not give up on any of us even in our brokenness. And the events of this day proclaim that Jesus is the one who showed us this way, who showed us how to live differently. And he did it all with such great love that even his disciples and even us today are still find it hard to believe. Mm -hmm. And as you said, we, we see that. We see that we when see it. we see it with Jesus on the cross. In Jesus, Jesus' brokenness on the cross, that brokenness mends us. It gives us life. It takes all that brokenness in us. That's God's sign of, of the mending of our brokenness and what Jesus did for us. Yeah. So the brokenness that is in our lives and that is exposed is healed through love. Mm -hmm. It's healed through Jesus as being a part of each of our lives. Hmm. So as we continue this journey, if we continue this journey from this day to the cross, I think we can take with us strength, strength in the knowledge that on this journey we are not alone, in this journey that is our relationships, the relationships yeah. because I see our relationships as journeys. We journey with each other through our lives, through whatever those relationships are. We know that even in the brokenness, even in that brokenness, that God's love is there. God's love through Jesus Christ is there to give us an example, to give us a guide, to show us that no relationship is too broken or so broken that in love, in the love of God that we know in Jesus that we see on the cross. That every relationship, if we are willing to 
put our effort into it, put ourselves mm-hmm. aside and be willing to just be love re- each other. Be restored. Yeah. Be restored to a new life. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the message. That nothing is too broken. Nothing is too broken for God to heal. Yep. Amen. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness darkness has not not overcome it. it.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. in peace.